Hi, exciting news. There is another 3D program now for the iPad or tablet, Valance 3D. Uh, it's been out for about three to four weeks now. And I want to give a thanks to a viewer of mine who tipped me off to this program. I didn't know anything about it. That was the first I heard of it. So thank you very much. Um, I'm going to butcher your name. So I'm going to just apologize right up front. Johannes Margarian. I doubt I nailed that. So very sorry, but thank you very much. Um, this is a very interesting tool. And this video is not going to be, you know, is Valance 3D the nomad sculpt killer? Uh, not at all. In fact, you know, I'm I'm excited about the fact that there is other tools out there that I could use in collaboration with Nomad Sculpt. Even if there was a little bit of overlap, which at the current time, I'm not seeing that there is too much overlap between Nomad Sculpt and Valance 3D, other than the fact that they're 3D programs. So Nomad Sculpt is, as its name, you know, proclaims a sculpting tool. And that means that it's taking a different approach to 3D. Valance 3D is taking a more traditional approach. You know, it's a mesh modeler. It's if you are into hard surface modeling, you're going to be very excited about this tool. And if you've used Blender before, you'll be familiar with the interface. It's you can select faces, edges, and vertices and manipulate those points. And it's very much a traditional 3D modeler, more akin to Blender, whereas Nomad's more akin to ZBrush. So if you're familiar with those tools, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Um, I wanted to take this time to look at Valance 3D. For me, I just think, you know, it's great to have more tools at my disposal. I should say up front that Valance 3D is a paid app. It's at least just a one-time paid app. It's about $25 to $30. I can't remember. I think it's just below $30. I could be wrong, but somewhere in that range. Yeah, so... I think it's I think it's going to be worth it. I've used things like Shaper 3D, and that was a really cool tool. I really enjoyed using that, but it was a paid subscription model, and it was pretty pricey. That didn't stick around very long. And now that we have this, I see it as you know worth the value. So I know it's expensive, so I can understand if you're on the fence about using yet another 3D tool on your iPad. But you know, give it a shot. I'm going to just barely touch on some of the tools and, and kind of show you what the what the potential is if you aren't familiar with 3d apps like blender and cinema 4d then you may want to dig into more information than i'm going to give you i'm just going to touch lightly on it a great resource would be going to the valance 3d youtube channel i watched a few videos there and the instructor was really great the pace that he went at was perfect he didn't move too fast he kind of explained everything thoroughly and didn't gloss over details he went through it step by step. So I think you'll get a lot out of those videos. I highly recommend going there. So let's jump into it. I'm right now, I'm in Nomad. And the only reason I'm I'm showing Nomad is because I wanted to point out this fact. Um, in Nomad, you can see my pencil movement as well as my taps. Um, I wasn't able to get this to work in Balance 3D. Um, I couldn't find the Apple Pencil Hover feature in there. And it may exist, I just couldn't figure it out. So I turned on this Apple. This is a native Apple accessibility thing. So it's a cursor. Unfortunately, there's, it's not, I couldn't lower the transparency. So I'm just gonna kind of use this to point out things in Valance. So let's jump over. We're here in, we're here in Valance 3D. This is the gallery view or project view. Um, there's some, some built-in project files that kind of show you what Valance 3D is capable of. I'm just gonna tap on this one. This is um, primitives. So there's a lot of cool primitives built into this, um, and I'll show you where you can add these. If you want to create a brand new um, empty file, you need to come down to the lower right. You see the orange plus icon. I'm just going to tap on that. This will open a brand new blank template file, and you have a cube that's in here. So the first thing you notice is it, it resembles Nomad. This is not Valance 3D copying Nomad. A lot of 3D tools are like this. This is like a, a general viewport layout in most 3D apps. You know, the idea is to give you as much canvas space to work with. So all these icons being sort of pushed to the perimeter of the app is just, you know, it's just the natural sort of way to keep things clean. What I like about this app, if you keep an eye up here in this area, I'm gonna tap on some of these tools and you can see that the label is shown there. 
I can tap and hold and I think it stays up there. So I found that really useful because a lot of times you don't know what the icons, they're not standard icons. So you do need that help. Um, and just like Nomad, some of the gestures are the same. If I tap and drag my finger, I can orbit around the geometry. If I tap with two fingers and drag around the screen, I can pan my scene. And here there's a lot of like rocking, this like sort of tilting. That's also the two finger gesture. And then of course I can pinch and zoom with two fingers. So that's very similar to Nomad. And that's a good thing. Um, in terms of layers, you can find that down here in this very bottom left corner, this two column icon. I really am enjoying this sort of smooth easing motion for all of these, these tool trays. Um, so here, you know, you can turn on and off the visibility. This is called the outliner, but it basically shows any geometry that lives in your scene. I'm going to close this over. Oops. Uh, there's a similar but inverted icon also on the right corner, and that will open the inspector. So this is, if you see position, rotation, and scale, look at the icons. They relate to these icons over here. So even though this is called the move tool, it's position, then you have rotation and scale. So I can tap on the red, green, or blue um, letters and drag left or right here, up or down, and then in Z space. And then I can rotate. So let's make some changes here because there's some really nice features. If you look on the far right column, there's this rectangular icon in each of the each of these categories. That's meant to be an eraser icon, I believe. So I made some rotation. I made some position changes. Um, these eraser icons are reset buttons. So if I do just rotation, then you can see it resets the rotation. Um, and I haven't lost anything for my position or scale, but I can reset all those as well. And then we're back to square one. I really like that. And of course you can tap into any of the fields like the X value and type in a very specific number. Let me close this. You saw some of those primitives that I brought in earlier. Um, you can access those by tapping on this green plus icon. And I really like the spring sort of more of the easing animations. Um, really nice. Uh, one of the things that I really like is when you tap on a primitive, it's not added immediately. Let me actually hide the box. It's not, and let me undo, and then hide the box. Okay. When you hit add and bring in a primitive, I'm going to zoom up a bit. It hasn't fully added to your scene yet. Um, you get this sort of option to confirm or cancel whether or not you want to put it in your scene. You also get these controls for, you know, I have this slider control. Right now it's selected for major radius. And then I can select minor radius. So I like that. We can, we can adjust our object before it's brought in revolutions and then resolution. And then I can confirm or cancel. I'll cancel now. And let's just come back to our box. So I want to, I want to hit confirm because I want to talk about um, what makes this a very traditional 3D tool. The fact that you can go into, you have your object mode, which is the current selection, but you can go into these edit modes where you select the face, the edge, or the vertices. So let me turn on my move tool and you can see I'm in object mode, but if I come over to this single face and activate that, now I can tap on any of these sides and I've got the move tool active so I can just adjust that. Um, what's really nice is things like this, you know, if you've used Nomad and this is not a knock against Nomad because Nomad's a very sculpt focused app. It's not a hard surface modeler. Um, at this time, it's not. I won't say that that's not a possibility in the future. But right now, doing a shape like this isn't as easy as tapping on a face and dragging upward. So this is exciting. Um, I'm going to do undo. Undo and redo or left and right. They're very far apart, but that's okay. Another thing we can do is do things like inset or extrude, which are right here and here. And then there's this poke one, which I keep wanting to call keep wanting to call it poke, but let's try the inset. So we get this blue control here and there's two parts to it. In some cases, you'll find that when you use the circle, you get the expected result. But if you use this blue stem, which points to the face, it's actually a separate tool. So for the inset, I'm going to do that. I'm going to tap on the circle and pull inward and we get what's expected. We get a new face inset from the original face. I'm going to undo that. And I'm going to tap on the blue stem part of this tool. And here it's acting more like a scale tool. So you get two tools in one, and that can be beneficial. I'm going to move up to this extrude and show you again. I'm going to tap on the blue circle, 
and drag out. So that's the expected extrusion. Um, I'm going to undo. I'm going to drag on the, the blue stem. And this is just move. That could be very useful in this case. I could drag out an extrusion, decide how much I want to extrude, extrude another one, extrude another one, decide I want it to match roughly. So it's saving me from having to hit extrude and then move and then extrude and move, keep jumping around. So that could be beneficial. So that's faces. There's a lot of tools. You can do all kinds of things. Um, and there's, there's a lot more tools. Like you can decide to snap faces together. I'm sure I haven't, I haven't dug in deep enough to, to speak to all of these tools on the right, but um, I'll get there. So we're in face mode, but if we switch over to edge mode, then here we can select one of the edge segments and you can make shapes like this. Up again, bring it in. So this is very traditional modeling. If you're gonna work in Blender or Cinema 4D or Maya, this will all exist in those apps, this type of modeling. Um, and then of course vertices and vertices will be points at each corner. So where the three edges intersect, you'll find a point and that's the same thing. You can manipulate those. Yeah, that's it. Those are the main three controls minus the, you know, the full object control. So I'll show you quickly if we go back to face select, just kind of how easy it is to, to build something. I'm not going to do anything elaborate, but I'm going to select the top face and hit inset. I'm going to drag and inset this. I'm going to hit extrusion, bring it up, inset again, bring it in. So I've got sort of a building, and then I've even got this poke tool. And I can pull that up, and that's how easy it is to, to create something. So you can see that something like this in Nomad wouldn't be quite as easy. You could achieve it, though. And with face groups now, um, I want to do a video about this. There's a lot of really powerful, yeah, hard surface modeling tricks you can do now with face groups and it's potentially not this easy and the fact that this is very low poly is another plus for uh, hard surface modeling there's very few faces here i mean it's under 20 faces i would imagine at least under 30 so i'll i'll get around to showing that very soon the face groups hard surface modeling stuff but yeah i just wanted to show and make you aware that balance 3d existed because I just learned about it from Johannes. Thank you very much. And I, you know, I want to make sure that we all share, share the uh, knowledge here. So that's it. I hope that gives you some sense of the potential of this app. And like I said, please go to Balance 3D's YouTube channel and watch the videos. He, there's a lot of introductory, like what you can do that goes much more in depth than what I've just done. But yeah, I'll, I'll be doing some videos on this. I think I am, of course, a very loyal Nomad Sculpt person, but there's always room. And I think there's good collaboration between these tools because the strength here is hard surface and the strength of Nomad is sort of the organic, um, more sculptural um, tools. Yeah, I'd love to hear from you guys if you guys have been using it for the, you know, for the time that it's been out, the three or four weeks. i um, been using, using it a lot more than I have, I'm sure. Then please comment and tell me what you think about it. All right. So thanks for watching. Uh, keep making things and I'll see you next time.